Hello, Heritage Baptist Church. It's good to have you with us here on this Wednesday night. Just uh, what a blessing it is to be in God's house. And uh, just a few prayer requests. Continue praying for um, Brother Lance and, and uh, just that uh, he would uh, meet the Lord soon. That's his prayer is he's ready. And uh, what a, a great um, testimony to have of someone that knows where he's going to go and uh, knows that uh, his time is near. And so continue praying for him and Miss Diane and, and Leah and her family uh, also. Be praying for Brother Tom as he's been having some issues, just side issues. Uh, be praying for those. Uh, also be praying for Brother uh, Tim uh, with his kidneys that, uh, that uh, they would uh, continue to hold on. And, uh, and then also pray for Miss Mary. And we want to make sure that we lift our prayers up to Miss Mary also, uh, and just pray that uh, the surgery would be brought forward and she could have the tumor out and uh, just uh, continue uh, allowing her to seek the Lord. All right, I don't have any other announcements, but let's go ahead and do our, um, our verse today, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27 and 28, um, and I'll do it first and then we'll all do it together. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27 and 28, neither give place to the devil, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. And I always want to say need it at the end, but needeth. And so Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27 and 28, and uh, let's all begin. Ready? Begin. All right, very good. Hopefully this verse is getting uh, more and more um, easier to remember, and so just got to keep on. I'm get, I want to move on to another verse, and I've got a, actually a series of verses that we're going to do uh, that uh, David uh, kind of mentioned this would be a good thing to memorize. And so I think we're going to be looking into that, and uh, so we'll be doing a whole uh, different section pretty soon. Uh, I think on when we get together on our Wednesday nights, uh, we'll go through the whole thing. And uh, those older verses are hard to, uh, hard to remember, uh, like John 15, 13, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And uh, just, you know, uh, Psalms uh, 19, uh, 14, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Those verses should just come flow back to us, uh, but we will go ahead and um, work on those and uh, just... Uh, uh, you know, the, verse, the scripture is a good thing to memorize. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Tonight we're going to get into uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. And uh, just a quick review of chapter number 10. Uh, we see Paul's authority as a true apostle of God, and he states that uh, the weapons of Paul's warfare were not carnal. Uh, they are weapons that God has given him. Uh, I have in my notes, Paul ministered in the spirit with meekness and gentleness of Christ's spirit. And uh, really, that's something that we should, uh, we should know when we're witnessing to the lost to be uh, with Christ's spirit. Uh, Paul awarded uh, with the, the things that are fleshly, uh, but Paul's mind was in the spirit. His, he warred with the flesh, but his, his, uh, his, his mind was in the spirit. If you remember Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So that's important for us to remember that it's uh, not a fleshly war that we're fighting. I think about everything that's going on, it's all in the flesh, uh, but our war that we have and our tools of our warfare are spiritual tools to fight that fleshly war. And uh, so, but we don't wanna fight that in the flesh. Our mind needs to be in the spirit, much like Paul's. Paul's was disciplined, he had a disciplined mind in the spirit. Paul, we also know, had this boldness and authority and we know that Paul's ministry was not to judge the outward appearance Paul's authority was to edify the church to uh, seek after the Lord uh, Paul's authority would come from the Lord and it would be a, a bold authority that uh, as he found things that need to be fixed he would use his boldness uh, but with God's authority 
Um, we're going to pick up to, tonight in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter number 10, or 11, I'm sorry, 11. And so turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number um, 11. <clears throat> And we're going to try to make it through this completely, uh, but uh, the, the, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, we see that, uh, that the Bible starts out with uh, 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 Paul making a statement here. Um, if we look through verses 1 through 4, we see Paul's perspective, uh, spirit over the purity uh, of the Corinthians. And let's go ahead and read verses 1 through 4. God's word says, Would to God... Be ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. And that's simply to mean uh, that it needs to be uh, righteous before God. And, uh, but I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguile Eve through the sub, his subtly, uh, you, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. We're going to talk about that here a little bit too. For he had, or for if he had, that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom ye have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not uh, accepted, ye might well bear with him. So uh, right away there comes this warning, uh, you know, where uh, Paul is, is talking about the, uh, the, that, uh, the um, uh, spirit of the church and, and the perspective spirit of purity for the Corinthian church. Paul's hope to present them as a pure bride uh, to Christ. If you remember in verse number two, it says, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. And, and what that's really talking about is that purity, that uh, one that's right with Christ, that righteousness uh, that is required uh, there. And that's the way Paul wants to present the church. Now listen, uh, no different here with Heritage Baptist Church. I want to present our church with uh, the, as much righteousness for Christ as we can. How do we do that? Well, remember, the building is not the church, it's the people. And, and so as people seek the Lord and, and put on the righteous things and take off the worldly things, uh, that prepares them uh, to meet Christ. Paul's fear that they were, will wander from faithfulness of Christ or faithfulness uh, to Christ to something in the world. And this is a, a caution that they have here. Uh, if we look back in verse 3 and 4, we see, and I'm going to spend some time here, but in uh, chapter 11, verse number um, I got to flip back here. Verse number three, we see God or Paul giving a warning, but see, he says, but lest, but I lest, uh, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted by from the simplicity of or that is in Christ. And so this simplicity is that death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Now listen, Jesus Christ uh, has a simplicity of salvation. I'm glad that we don't have to study. I'm glad we don't have to be good enough uh, to see Christ or to meet Christ uh, is spiritually wise. Uh, simply this, that we know the, the, the evidence of salvation. First, you must know that you're lost and you're a sinner. Second, you must know Christ died on the cross for your sin. There's preparation. We know what that preparation, the repentance of heart. Lord, forgive me my sins. But the thing that gets you saved is calling upon the name of the Lord. It's a simple plan of salvation. Now here, uh, Paul is saying, I'm, I'm concerned because as the serpent beguiled Eve, so might someone come in here and give you a false religion, might give you a false doctrine. And we understand that a false doctrine, when it's preached and teached, is called heresy. And that heresy is something that we need to stay away from. And, and yet we see here, as, as, uh, as Paul's giving this warning to the church of Corinth, he's, he's saying, listen, my fear, my greatest fear is, is uh, not the people that seek after me to kill me. And that's not what his biggest fear was. His biggest fear was the church in Corinth seeking after. 
after another religion and, uh, and wandering from the faithfulness of Christ. And, and so we need to make sure that we keep our minds set on that. Note that Satan's subtle tactics, uh, that he does not attempt to move us uh, to a, a blatant idolatry or heresy, but rather to another Jesus. And, and now remember that uh, Satan is this great uh, imitator, and, and Satan gets people, and he gets Christians, and he gets them off on the wrong road by these little subtle things that he has. Uh, he might bring out, uh, he might in a Bible reading bring out a scripture and say, yeah, you know what, That's a, you need to focus on this minor thing here. And, and listen, uh, they, people can lose the whole purpose of the Bible and lose the plan of salvation by focusing on something else. And uh, really, Satan has a hand in doing that. The reason he does that is he, if Satan can get you focused on something else, if he can get you focused on a Bible that's not as good as the original, that's not as uh, whatever, uh, if he can get you focused on that, then he can get you focused and get you to where you're not sharing the gospel the way you should be sharing the gospel. Now listen, there are churches through the ages that do that, that uh, used to be, and I hate that word with the, the point of a church is, well, they used to be a good church. Listen, they should still be a good church seeking after Jesus Christ, giving the plan of salvation. But there are some churches that, uh, that uh, don't do that. There are some churches that uh, started off great and started off with the plan of salvation, but then they wandered. They wandered onto different doctrines. They wandered on different things. And listen, that ought not to be so. So here we see Paul giving that firm caution uh, to the church of Corinth, uh, and, and in that verse number four again, for he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. And, and you know, there are people that are preaching another Jesus in different religions, and, and there are some people preaching that he was a great teacher, and he was a, and he was a great teacher, but, but they say he is not the Son of God. That's heresy, and that's contrary to the Word of God. And so they preach this other Jesus, maybe this other Jesus that they can preach that is acceptant of sin. Our, our God and our Jesus is not acceptance of sin. He, he cannot stand sin. Sin is vile to him. And yet uh, uh, people preach another Jesus said, oh, he doesn't care about that sin or, or the sin of this or the sin of that. It's okay. Listen, that's not the way it ought to be. The Bible says that, that, God pre that uh, Jesus Christ cannot stand sin sin. And so, uh, and then it goes on that uh, it says, Jesus whom ye have not preached, or if ye received another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which we, ye have not uh, accepted, ye might well bear with him. And, and that was Paul's biggest fear is that they would go away, go away from the, the Jesus Christ with another gospel. Paul's humble ministry for the salvation of the church of Corinth. And I, I believe that's what he was focused on. Verses 5 through 11 deals with this. We'll break it down with each verse. Paul had a position, a rights, and authority as an apostle. And, and he states this in verse number 5. Look back in verse number 5 for with me. It says, For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very uh, chiefest apostle. So he's acknowledged he is a uh, Apostle, apostle. Uh, verse number six, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. And so Paul is sharing here that, uh, you know, and this is kind of the way I feel, is, is sometimes with, uh, with my speech, I, it doesn't come out correctly. But listen, there is the authority of God's word behind that speech. And, and, uh, and he says that in verse number five. He says, uh, for I suppose I was not a wit uh, behind every uh, chiefest apostle. He says, I'm not the smartest of the apostles. But listen, he says, uh, he said, though I be rude in speech, he, he said that uh, it's backed up in the gospel. The, the word of God is backed up. He had a position. He was the apostle. However, Paul functioned among them as a servant. And that is important for us to understand and claim that none of his rights. Uh, this was in direct uh, opposition to the glory of self-seeking of the super apostles who opposed Paul's. And there were these people that opposed Paul and everything he stood uh, stood for. Uh, but listen, Paul was humble in spirit. And, and when you think about the 
Paul's actions and then uh, how uh, Jesus Christ was, Paul was really uh, imitating Christ and, and he was uh, seeking to be more Christ-like in his manner and those things. And he knew that he had to deal with the rudeness of speech and all those that bluntness. I believe Paul had this bluntness of speech. He knew this was a, a bluntness of speech, but yet he, uh, he uh, is willing to deal with that and, and he is willing so he can touch other people. Uh, I think about the Pharisees at the time and the Sadducees and all those folks that were coming after Paul and, and who opposed Paul. And, and, and listen, um, it's not about painting yourself a certain way. And the one thing I found with ministry and one thing I found with uh, preaching is it's not all glamour and it's not all this and it's not all that. And, and, the, and, and really the authority from the Word of God, sometimes it's hard to use that authority because you offend people. Sometimes it's hard to use that authority because people get upset with you. But listen, that's not what the way it ought to be. Uh, Paul is saying here to be, we are to remain humble and we ought to seek after Christ. And listen, if it comes from the authority of God, we must accept it. Uh, it's not a, a super apostle, but yet it's the apostle Paul, the meek, the, 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 the one that uh, is uh, uh, seeing himself before Christ as humble. Paul's focus was not on a polished eloquent, uh, eloquency of a speaker, but on sharing the knowledge of Christ. He was less interested in repressing people with style and performance, and he wanted to grow saints. He wanted to see saints get saved, and he wanted to, to see saints receive the gospel. Look at with me in verse number 6 of our text. It says, though, uh, but though I be rude in speech... Uh, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. And so he understands this and he says, though I be rude in speech, I, I know what Jesus Christ wants us to do. I know what he wants us to say. And so he, he humbly uh, seeks after the Lord. Um, <clears throat> being a servant is important for Paul. Paul's focus, again, was not on his eloquency, but was on delivering the message. Paul refused to be paid uh, by the church of Corinth, and we see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7 through 10. But, uh, but now some were misunderstanding his uh, humility uh, as a lack of authority, but that's not what it was, that, that he was humble before the people, and he did not want to get paid uh, there. If we look in verse number 7, through 10 and, and let's go ahead and read that it says I have or have I committed any offense in abasing myself that ye might uh, be exalted because uh, I have preached to you the gospel of God freely now I'll just take uh, take note in that in verse number seven he's asking that question but he's saying look uh, I have done nothing but preach the word of God and I preach that uh, freely. Uh, I have robbed, uh, I, I robbed other uh, churches taking wages of them uh, do, uh, to do you service. <coughs> and when I was present with you and, I, and wanted, I was uh, chargeable to no man for that which was lacking to me the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied in all, in all things. I kept myself from being burdensome uh, unto you, and so I will keep myself. So here it's important to know that Paul's saying uh, that we're going to, he's going to just keep himself uh, before he's going to take care of himself. God's going to take care of him. And then verse number 10, as the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. So uh, we see here that Paul is talking about being that servant, but he refused to get paid. Now, what was Paul's motive? If we look a, a little bit further, we talk, see Paul's motive here. And what was Paul's motive? And wherefore, uh, because I love you not, uh, knoweth God. Uh, he, the, really, what he's saying there is, I love you guys, and that's why I'm willing to do all this, and that's why I'm willing to seek after the Lord, and that's why I'm willing to uh, to um, to uh, seek after everything that uh, is in God's Word and share the gospel with you. And so uh, we seek after that. Now, 
just got to make sure my camera didn't change. I hit the cord. Paul's caution concerning the en enemies of the church of Corinth. Now, if we look in verses 12 through 20, we see a few things that we're going to break down here. But Paul was concerned about the enemies that, uh, that of the church of Corinth. Now, listen, anytime you're doing God's work, you're going to have enemies. Anytime you're seeking after the Lord, you're going to have enemies. And Paul, we see here, was seeking after Christ and and the enemies are going to come. Paul wanted them to know who their enemies were. And simply this, he uses that term in verse 12 through 13. He says the false apostles. Look back with me in that. It says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So these false apostles are coming up and they're popping up everywhere. And they're saying they're of Christ. They're saying some are saying they are Christ. But listen, he says they're false. They're not right. They're transforming themselves. They're, they're, and he says in verse 14, and no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into the angel of light. We see that uh, as he looks at that, he says, don't marvel at these things. Because Satan even transformed himself into, this, into the uh, angel of light. Thus, many so-called Christian preachers are actually devils called and demons sent. We see in verse 15, he talks about that. He says, therefore, is no great thing. If his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And and uh, just it makes me remember that uh, in first John and you shall know them by their works. And and boy, isn't that true on that part? We see here that uh, as they are looking at that, they see that uh, that uh, they take advantage of the of the people. And uh, and if we look in verses 19 and 20, we see that it says, uh, for ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye there, uh, seeing you yourselves are wise for ye suffer. If any man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you in, on the face. So uh, this is important for us to understand. Now, listen. I look back at these cults that have come through. I'm thinking of Guyana and Jim Jones and all that stuff. Something's in common at the beginning is they're rising up and they're saying there's a better way and we will give you freedom and we will give you this and you will experience this and you'll experience that. And they go away from the word of God and they start following the philosophies of a man and a man starts leading them. And here's what happens is that uh, they don't know it in the beginning. They're thinking freedom. Yay, it's all freedom, but it's not. He's bringing them into bondage. And uh, look what happened in Guyana. That's a, a perfect example uh, is Jim Jones put people in bondage. They were he, he made people addicted to drugs. Uh, he he held them uh, against their will with weapons. They were in bondage there. And as the being in bondage, you say, how could they do that? Well, they were in the beginning. They were uh, seeking after something that was false. They were looking for that freedom. They were looking for all those things. And he says, I've got it. Come follow me. We'll do this. And and listen, he didn't say follow Jesus Christ. He said, follow him. And he used the 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 Bible to confuse uh, their minds and he used those things to to cause problems and listen in the end they were in total bondage and they were forced to either uh, drink the Kool-Aid or be shot and that's how how horrible did that end it ended wrong Satan is the most da dangerous guys uh, Satan is he, he's he's he, he portrays himself as total light he was talking about these false apostles and where did they come from? They said he refers to that they came from Satan. Let's look back again to 14 and 15. It says, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed to the angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing that if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, who in shall be according to their works. We shall know them by their works. Satan was that angel of light. So many so-called Christian preachers are really just not uh, not really preachers that uh, they, they, they preach heresy. They preach things that are wrong. 
What they do in verse 16 through 20, it talks about what these uh, worldly people do in this, uh, in this thing. They, they, the glory of the flesh is re really brought up, uh, judging spirituality by worldly, worldly standards. We see this today, and it, if a worldly standard's there, then you have that worldly success. In verses 16 through 18, he says, I say again, no man think uh, me a fool, if otherwise, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as, uh, as it were foolishness in the confidence of boasting. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man brings you into bondage, if a man devours you, if a man takes you, if a man exalts himself, if a man smites you in the, on the face. We see these things that, uh, that, uh, that Paul is uh, talking about. And, and we see that uh, it, we see just a few things that they do. They made themselves lords over the church, teach, teaching from a legalistic view or, or, or uh, you know, trying to make them obey themselves and not God. They devoured the finances of the Corinthian church by demanding uh, exorbitant offerings. They take you in, they snaring you with enticing bait. They exalt themselves and they slap you in the face, abusing you spiritually and verbally. Paul's continuing sufferings for Christ. We see that in verses 21 all the way to, to the end of the chapter. While the super apostles boasted of their credentials, Paul would only boast of his suffering. Uh, we see in, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 23, the second part, we see backbreaking labor. Let's look at some of these. Uh, in verse 23, and they are ministers. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant in stripes, more uh, above measure in prisons, more frequent in death, more off. So we see here the backbreaking labor that he had. We see the beatings that he had. We see that uh, the stripes above measure, he mentions those. We see in prison constantly. Paul was constantly in prison. And someone uh, was reading something from a missions board and it says, oh, we see you have prison time. Our, our, our missionaries are not allowed to have prison time. So they would take Paul and disqualify him from that prison time. What they didn't understand or what they should account for is that time in prison was in prison for Jesus Christ. Uh, but we see that he was constantly in prison. The dangers of death often. We see that 39 stripes, uh, 39 stripes, uh, five different times, and that 39 save one because that, that death blow would be happened there. That's how close he was to death. If you look in verse two, two, or 24 of our text, it says, of the Jews five times received I 40 stripes save one. And uh, often believe that 40th stripe would have killed him. Thrice he was beaten with rods. Look in verse 25. It says, thrice I was beaten with rod. Once I was stoned. Thrice I was shipwrecked. Uh, a night and day I, I would have been in the deep. Um, I have been in the deep. And we see uh, as we look at God's word, we see that that, uh, that often happening uh, there for that, uh, that, uh, that he was beaten uh, beyond measure. He was shipwrecked three times. He was wearisome of his travels and he was constantly in danger. And something you should know about the apostle Paul is that all the time he was in danger. Verse 26 says, in journeyings often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my my own countrymen in perils of by the heathen in perils of, in the city in perils in the wilderness in perils in the sea in perils in false brethren boy it seems like every time that uh, where Paul turned Satan was willing to attack and Satan was willing to get after him and and we see that this happened all the time in his journeys and you look there and it seems like there was no place he could go uh, in this Verse 27, in, will, in weariness and painfulness and watchings, and watchings often, in hunger and in thirst and fasting often, in cold and in nakedness. Besides those things which are without, 
That which cometh upon me daily is the care of all the churches. Boy, I tell you, in all those problems, he never ceased praying for his churches, for the churches God has. Never ceased praying for the people. Now listen, when we break down churches, again, it's not this building. It's the people yeah, that come together, a called out assembly. And Paul, uh, I think Paul probably kept a list and knew them by name. But, but here's the important thing. He prayed for them. He's always felt that burden. Paul says, who is weak and I'm, am I not weak? Who is offended and I burned not? Boy, if Paul was ever offended uh, or if anyone was offended, Paul uh, could have been offended because uh, just thinking about those people that love him one second and are out to kill him the next. If I must needs glory, I will glory in the things which concern my infirmities. The God and, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. He says here, in all these things, in all these things, he'll seek the Lord. In all these things, the daily pressure of the churches, the, the, again, the, the stripes above measure, the backbreaking work, the prisons constantly, the danger uh, uh, of death often, uh, 40 stripes saved one five times, thrice beaten with rods, stoned once, shipwrecked three times, wearisome travels, exhaustion, pain, fear, lack of necessities, clothing and food, the daily pressure of caring for the local churches that he oversaw and near escapes, and yet he never ceased keep taking his eyes off the Lord. And he, he tells the church of Corinth this, he says, God the Father, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ knows that I'm telling the truth. Verse number 32, in Damascus, the governor under Aretas, uh, the, king, uh, the king, kept the city of Damascus with a garrison desirous to apprehend. He, had, he said, look, the whole Damascus was after me. A king was after me. The governor was after me. And it was so bad that they were hunting him down. He says, and, and through a window... In a basket, I was let down by the wall, and I escaped his hands. You know, when I was reading this chapter, we're going to end here, but when I was reading this chapter, one thing I, I figured out. Paul had this burden that God gave him to take care of these churches. He loved them. He desired them to seek after the Lord. He did not want to have any false doctrine enter in. But then we look at all the other things that Satan attacked. And Satan just, man, he just left and right. But through all this, Paul kept his testimony. Through all this, Paul sought after the Lord. Through all this, Paul desired, desired to seek after God. And the reason I think he mentions that last part is because when it looked hopeless, God gave him a way to escape. You know, in our Christian life, sometimes that's what happens. Things look pretty hopeless, but God can give you an escape. Things can look pretty dire. We can feel like uh, we're under attack all the time, and God will wrap his arms around you. Listen, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I pray today that you would come to know him. And perhaps there's someone out there that says, what do I do to get saved? I'm ready to get saved. Well, here's what you can do. You can kneel down and say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. Lord, I know you died on the cross for me. Lord, save me of my sin. Forgive me of my sin. But the thing that gets you, gets you saved is that last part. Lord, save me. Save me. The Bible says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. Listen, we're going to have a time of invitation as the piano player comes and softly plays. If the Lord has talked to your heart and you need to have a time where you need to come before him and you need to tell the Lord that you need to be saved, that's between you and God. And if you need to receive Jesus Christ today, then just kneel down. Have that heart to heart with God. Seek after him. Say, Lord, would you save me? 
Maybe today you're going through trials in your life, and I know there are a lot of folks doing trials. But maybe today, through these trials, you can be like the Paul, Apostle Paul, knowing that God, you're going through those trials, but God has his arms around you. Knowing that every time that, that you, you get attacked, that God has promised to offer you a way to escape if you look, look towards him. Listen, now's the time to bring those before the Lord. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, have your hand upon this invitation. Lord, as we come before you, we ask you to guide us and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. During this time of invitation, won't you kneel down and spend time with God? Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this time. Lord, we lift you up. We praise you. We thank you for the way you've talked to our hearts. Lord, thank you for this message on chapter 11 with the Apostle Paul. Lord, we pray that you guide our thoughts and our direct our ways this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Heritage Baptist Church, thank you so much for being attentive today. And I just want to uh, ask you to seek after the Lord this week. Come back to church on Sunday. Listen, uh, uh, it's pretty safe here and we've got everything quarantined and so I want to encourage you to come back to church and and uh, just to see if we can't fill out our church and and uh, just have a great day in the Lord for uh, uh, Sunday is Father's Day if I'm not mistaken uh, so uh, we'll have a time uh, a present for the fathers uh, so I want to invite you to come to that and uh, just uh, now listen read your Bible pray every day and grow in Christ and, uh, and then don't forget to support your church. God bless you. Have a good week.